Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Ray, and today we're going to talk about circles. There are many different ways we can look at a circle in high school geometry. In this video, we're going to focus on the equation of a circle. That is to say, writing down an equation that will give you the x and y coordinates of points on a plane that form a circle. One of the things that's really cool about a circle is how simple it is. So what is a circle? It's the locus of points that are a certain fixed distance away from a central point, which we call the center. Let's think about what that means. If we want to create a specific circle, we need to choose two things. We need to choose the center of the circle, and we need to choose the radius of the circle. Then we simply locate all of the points that are the correct distance away from the center. In this case, that's five. All of those points together make up our circle. Our goal today is going to be to figure out how to write down the equation of that circle, and then do some algebraic work with that equation. So to figure out the equation, we're going to start with a circle centered at the origin. What we need to do is figure out a way to describe all of these points that are on this circle. Let's call those points x, y. x and y, of course, will be variables, so there will be infinitely many x's and y's that will locate points on this circle. Notice that if I connect the center of the circle to any point on the circle, I get the radius of that circle. Here comes the first really interesting surprise with circles. The last thing you would think about if you were trying to come up with the equation of a circle would be a triangle. But the way we come up with the equation for a circle is with right triangles. And if you think about it, that actually makes sense because how do we measure distance in the coordinate plane? with Pythag, of course. If I create a right triangle with a horizontal and vertical line, the horizontal component is my delta x, and the vertical component is my delta y between the center of the circle and this point x, comma y on the circle. That means the hypotenuse is the radius of the circle. Pythag tells us that the leg squared plus the other leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared whenever we have a right triangle. Oops, that's a right triangle. Pythag tells us that the leg squared plus the other leg squared of a right triangle is always equal to the hypotenuse squared. In this case, that's the delta x squared plus the delta y squared is equal to r squared. But wait a minute. If we start at the point 0, 0, and we go to the point x, comma y, then isn't our delta x just x? And isn't our delta y just y? So this equation simplifies to just x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And that's the equation for any circle whose center is at the origin. It's that simple. So if I wanted the equation of a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 3, that would be x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Since the radius is 3, that's 3 squared or 9. That's the equation of a circle whose center is the origin and radius is 3. What about this equation? So this is also the equation of a circle, x squared plus y squared equals 37. Where is the center of the circle? Well, it's 0, 0 again. And what is the radius? Well, remember, this number 37 is equal to the r squared. So the radius of the circle is the square root of 37. Notice I'm only taking the positive square root, not the negative, because we're in geometry and distances are always positive. Hopefully this makes sense so far and you might be thinking, wow, circles are really easy. And you're not wrong, but there's more to the story because we're leaving something very important out here. Up until now, our circles have to be centered at the origin. So what about a circle who's not centered at the origin? So we'll need some variables to represent the center. Traditionally in mathematics, we use h comma k to be the coordinates of the center of a circle. h and k are just variables. They could be any number, two comma three, 8 comma negative 5, it doesn't matter. Just like before, if we connect the center of the circle to any point on the circle, we'll get the radius of the circle. Just like before, we'll create a triangle with a horizontal and vertical component, and the horizontal piece will be our delta x, the vertical piece will be our delta y. And once again, Pythag tells us that the delta x squared plus the delta y squared has to be equal to the radius squared. So let's just think for a moment about what the delta x is. So we need to know what is the change between h and x. Well, what mathematical operation allows you to find change? Subtraction, right? So all we need to do to figure out what this delta x is, is subtract these two x values. So what is our delta x? It's x minus h. Same thing in the y direction. If I want to know how different these two y values are, all I need to do is take their difference, subtract them. So the delta y is y minus k. And putting that all together, we get the equation for a circle whose center is h comma k, and whose radius is r. Here's a couple of examples so you can see what I'm talking about. This is what the equation of a circle looks like. Remember, it's x minus h squared, and it's y minus k squared. In order to figure out the center, we just need to know what h and k are. Since x minus h is x minus 3, that means h has to be 3. So the x coordinate of the center is 3. And if y minus k is y plus 5, well, what would k need to be so that when you subtract it, you end up adding it? Doesn't that mean k has to be negative? 
so k is in negative 5, and the y-coordinate of the center is negative 5. Since 36 is the radius squared, the radius, of course, is just 6. So the center is 3, negative 5, and the radius is 6. Let's take a look at this example on the right. Again, I'll start by locating my center, which is at h, comma, k. Remember, it is always x minus h that's inside of this binomial. So if x minus h is x plus 7, what does h need to be? Yeah, h needs to be negative 7. That way, when you do x minus negative 7, you end up with x plus 7. Likewise, this is y minus k squared. So if y minus k is y minus 11, what is k? k is 11. So the center of this circle is negative 7, comma, 11. What about the radius? Well, remember, this is the radius squared. So if the radius squared is 17, what is the radius itself going to be? Radical 17. This equation describes a circle whose center is negative 7, comma, 11, and whose radius is the square root of 17. What if I'm given a picture like this to look at, and I'm asked to write the equation of the circle? Since they're telling us the center is negative 1, comma, 2, that means that h is negative 1 and k is 2. We know that any circle has to have the equation x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Plugging in these values of h and k gives us x plus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared. The only thing we don't know is the radius. And we don't actually even need to know the radius. We just need to know the radius squared in order to finish our equation. So how could we figure that out? Well, Pythag. If we connect the center of the circle to a point on the circle, and then just like we did when we were creating the equation, we create a right triangle with a horizontal and a vertical component. That horizontal component is, of course, my delta x, and the vertical component is delta y. So what is the delta x? Well, it starts at negative 1, ends up at 4. So that's a delta x of 5. What about the delta y? Starts at 2, ends up at 4. That's a delta y of 2. And then good old Pythag tells us that 5 squared plus 2 squared is the radius squared, which means the radius squared is 29. The radius, of course, would be the square root of 29, but I don't actually care because the radius squared is what I need to finish my equation. The radius squared is 29, and this is the equation of the circle in the picture. Let's take a look at one more example before we move on to something else. I'm going to give you the coordinates of the endpoints of the diameter. So for this one, we're going to want to have a picture. What I want to do is make a picture that will help me organize my information and figure out what I need to know. So they're telling us that the endpoints of the diameter are 2, 6, and 8, negative 2. So I'm going to label one of these points 2, 6, and the other one 8, negative 2. In order to find the equation of the circle, I need to know two things. I need to know what the center is, and I need to know what the radius is. What makes a diameter a diameter is that it has to go through the center of the circle. And because of the symmetry of a circle, we know that this point has to be the midpoint of the diameter. That is to say, the center of the circle is the midpoint of these two points. Since the midpoint is the point right in the middle, it's always going to be at the average of the x-coordinates and the average of the y-coordinates. That means that this center is the average of the x's, which is 2 and 8, comma, the average of the y's, which are negative 2 and 6. Plugging that in and working it out gives us a center located at 5, 2. Once we know where the center is, we know the equation has to be x minus 5 squared plus y minus 2 squared, and it'll be equal to the radius squared. We just don't know what the radius is yet, but that's all right. To find the radius, we're just going to draw that same right triangle again. The horizontal part is delta x. The vertical parts are delta y. Since the delta x goes from 5 to 8, that makes it 3. Since the delta y goes from 2 to negative 2, that makes it 4. Now, you could do negative 4 or positive 4. It doesn't really matter because we're going to square it in Pythag anyway. The hypotenuse of that triangle is, of course, the radius that we're looking for. And Pythag tells us that 3 squared plus 4 squared is the radius squared, which means the radius squared is 25. You may recognize this one as a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, so the radius of this circle is 5. But remember, the radius isn't what goes over here. It's the radius squared. So there you have it. The equation of this circle is x minus 5 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 25, the radius squared. By the way, when I first drew the circle, notice I put the diameter on an angle. That may have seemed like an odd choice to you. Perhaps your inclination would be to make the diameter horizontal or vertical. The reason I put it at an angle is that I knew we were going to have to do a Pythag here, so I wanted to have room to draw my triangle. In this question, we're being given the equation of a circle, and we're asked to determine if this point is on the circle. This is actually a very easy question to figure out if you think about what it means that this is the equation of a circle. So for a moment, let me just take a quick aside. You'll, of course, recognize this as the equation of a line. If I were to ask you if the point 6, 15 is on this line, all you would do is plug in 6 for the x, 15 for the y, and if that x and y work in the equation, you'll know that the point is on the line. 
we get the true statement that 15 equals 15, which means, yes, the point 6 comma 15 is on the line y equals 2x plus 3. That's what it means to be the equation of the line, and that's what it means for this to be the equation of this circle. If you can find an x and a y that make this equation work, those are the x and y coordinates of a point on that circle. So, is 6 comma 3 on the circle? Well, it's easy to find out. If we plug 6 in for x, and 3 in for y, which is 9 plus 25, which is equal to 34. So yes, this point is on the circle. Could you think of another point that's on the circle? Well, if you think about it, we just need a 3 and a 5. If x was 8, then 8 minus 3 would be 5. So 8 comma, what could we put in for y so that we get a 3? Well, 1 would work, wouldn't it? So what about the point 8 comma 1? Well, let's plug in and find out. We do indeed again get 34 equal to 34, which means yes, the point 8 comma 1 is on the circle. As a matter of fact, here's the graph of the circle we've been talking about. Let's go ahead and test that first point 6 comma 3. You can see that lands right on the circle. How about that point 8 comma 1 that we just chose? You can see that lands right on the circle as well. And of course we can come up with other points that will also land on the circle. For example, 8 comma 1. So this worked because the 8 got us the 5 and the 1 gave us the 3. What else could we have put here for the y coordinate that would also generate a 3 when we plug it in? It has to be something that we add 2 and get 3. We could do that with a positive 1, but couldn't we also do that with a negative 5? Boom, right on the circle. So once you have the equation of a circle, it's really easy to find lots of other points that are also on that circle. To test whether a point is on a circle, you simply plug in the x and y coordinates. And if you want to find other points that are on the circle, you just need to find x's and y's that will give you the right two values when you plug them into the circle equation. At this point, there's really just one more trick I need to show you when working with the equation of a circle. That is something called the standard form of the equation of a circle. So this big mess up here, although it might look kind of intimidating, is actually just the equation of the circle. A, B, C, and D. They can be any real number, but they're usually integers. Notice that the x squared term and the y squared term have the same number. That's how you know this is a circle. If you have an x squared and a y squared, and it's the same coefficient in front of them, that's going to be the equation of a circle. In order for us to be able to use the equation, we really want it to look like this. This is what's called the center radius equation of the circle, and this is the one we've been working with so far in this video. When we're given something like this, and we want to turn it into something like this, we have to complete the square twice. If you're not familiar with completing the square, I'll put a link in the description to a video that I have that will show you everything you need to know about completing the square. In this video, I'll show you how to do it with the equation of a circle, but I'm going to move a little bit fast because I'll assume you're familiar with the procedure already. So in this video, my goal is going to be to show you how to use the technique of completing the square to turn something like this, which is the equation of a circle in standard form, into this, the equation of a circle in center radius form. Here we have the equation of a circle in standard form. We know it's a circle because there is an x squared and a y squared term, and the coefficient is 1 on each of them. The first thing I want to do is get my x squared terms and my y squared terms together, and then push any constants, like the 27 in this case, to the other side of the equation. I'm going to color code everything I do here so that we can keep the x's and the y's separate. So I have my x by x square and my negative 4x rectangle, and the area is... Well, I actually don't know what the area is. It's tempting to say it's 27, but remember, this y squared plus 8y is here also. So there's another square and another rectangle that is contributing to this total number of 27. So I don't actually know what the area is, but that's okay. I'm going to split that negative 4 rectangle right down the middle, bring the right half down to the bottom, so I get almost an x minus 2 by x minus 2 square. I still don't know what the area is, but I haven't changed it. So whatever it was here, it's the same thing right here. But now I am going to change it because I need to complete this square. So I'm going to fill in this bottom right corner, and I'm going to add 4 to the area, which means whatever the area was, it's now 4 bigger. So what is this picture telling us? That an x squared and a negative 4x rectangle, which is what we have here, is the same as an x minus 2 square if I add an extra 4 in for the area. So we can replace this x squared minus 4x with an x minus 2 square, as long as we balance out the equation by adding that extra 4 to the right-hand side. Now we're going to do the same thing with the y's. I want to replace this y squared plus 8y with some quantity squared. To do that, I'll draw the same picture for the y's. So we have a y by y square and an 8y rectangle. Just as always, I'll split that rectangle down the middle, and I'll bring that right half down to the bottom. Once again, I need to complete the square by filling in this little piece in the corner. This time, that extra little piece is 16, so I have 16 more area than I used to have. Again, I don't know what the area of this red shape is, but it didn't change until I added in that bottom right-hand corner. 
So what this is telling me is that y squared plus 8y, which is what we started with, is the same as a y plus 4 square as long as I add that extra 16 to balance out the equation. So I'm sorry this got a little squished over here. I'll try to do a little bit better on the next example. But you can see what's happening is we're just completing the square once with the x's and once with the y's. And after we do that, we're just going to go ahead and clean everything up. And now we have the equation of the circle in center radius form. So we can easily answer a question like, what is the center? 2 comma negative 4. And we could also answer the question, what is the radius? That would be the square root of 47. By using the technique of completing the square twice, we can turn something like this, the equation of a circle in standard form, into something like this, the equation of a circle in center radius form. And this is the way we always want our equations of circles to be, because it's easy to tell what the center is, what the radius is, then we can graph the circle, and answer any other kinds of questions we'd want to know. There's a lot going on here, so let's take a look at one more example of that before we wrap this video up. So here's another equation of a circle in standard form. Once again, there's an x squared and a y squared with the same coefficient of 1. That's how you know it's a circle. The first thing I want to do is pull the x's together, the y's together, and get the constant on the other side by itself. Once I've done that, I'm going to complete the square once with the x's and once with the y's just as before. So we have an x by x square and a 6x rectangle. I don't know what the area is, but that's okay. What we really need to keep track of is how the area changes. So to complete the square, I'll divide that extra rectangle in half. I'll bring that other half to the bottom, giving me an x plus 3 by x plus 3 almost square. At this point, I have not changed the area, but I need to complete the square by filling in this little corner. So my area has gone up by 9. That means I can replace this x squared plus 6x with an x plus 3 square, as long as I balance out the equation by adding in that extra 9 on the right-hand side. Same thing with the y's. I want to replace this y squared minus 10y with something squared, so to do that, I'll draw the picture first. So I have my y by y square and my negative 10y rectangle. I don't know what the area is, but I want to keep track of how it changes. So I'll split that rectangle down the middle, leave half of it where it was, and bring the other half to the bottom. So I get this almost y minus 5 by y minus 5 square. To complete the square, I'll fill in this little corner in the bottom. This time that extra area is 25, which means the area, whatever it was, has gone up by 25. That means I can replace the y squared minus 10y rectangle with a y minus 5 square. So y squared minus 10y rectangle gets replaced with a y minus 5 square. And in order to make that all right, I have to balance out the equation by adding in that extra 25 of area. And there we have the equation of our circle in center radius form. That's all there is to it. You're just going to separate your x's and y's, complete the square with the x's, complete the square with the y's, and then you get the equation of the circle the way you want it. And then, of course, you can easily determine the center and radius. In this case, the center is negative 3 comma 5, and the radius is the square root of 37. It occurs to me I haven't shown you how to sketch a circle. Once you've got the center and the radius of a circle, all you need to do to sketch it is locate the center on the graph. So in this case, that's negative 3 comma 5. I'm going to put a dot there. And then what I'm going to do is go up, down, left, and right the radius of the circle. Now, this is the square root of 37, which is just a little bigger than 6. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 just a little bit higher up. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, just a little bit further down. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, just a little further to the left. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, just a little further to the right. And then all you're going to do is just kind of fill in the circle as best as you can using these as guides. I find it helpful to do one corner at a time, as you saw there. And it's never going to be perfect. You just want to try to get it to look as close to a circle as you can. So to recap, the equation of a circle in center radius form looks like this. The center is always h comma k, where h and k can be found inside of these parentheses with the y and the x. Remember we got this from Pythagorean theorem, so the sign here is always going to be opposite of what it is here. In other words, x minus 3 means that h is 3. x plus 3 would mean that h is negative 3. Your radius is always squared over here, so remember to take the square root of whatever number appears over there. And if you find yourself looking at the equation of a circle in standard form like this, don't panic. All you need to do is complete the square twice to turn it into center radius form like this. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, feel free to leave a comment below, and as always, have a great day.